So we're starting part two of the byway. If you're following along in the byway booklet, the byway is broken into three parts. First part went around Glens Ferry. Second part now goes from Glens Ferry up to Highway 20. And the third part goes from Highway 20 back up to Bonneville Point near Boise. So the Oregon Trail came into Idaho in southeast Idaho over east of Montpelier. Came up through Soda Springs, crossed Mount Putnam over to Fort Hall, and then it's followed down the south side of the Snake River almost across the state to here. This is real close to I-84. There's a nice rut that comes across the interstate and it continues up this dirt road which essentially is the Oregon Trail. At the base of the hill, you come to a triple swell that climbs the hill coming out of the Snake River Canyon. We're not gonna drive it today because of the dry grass. I don't wanna set the area on fire, but it is something you can go to. It's a little bit rough. Do not drive on the trail. That is highly illegal, but you can drive on this dirt road up to see that triple swell. So I'm here along Hot Springs Creek. One of the dams is a little bit over here. This is a pristine section of Oregon Trail. You can see it through the sagebrush. The tracks are still evident through here. But this is one of the most pristine sections of trail that I know of. And so we marked it with concrete posts and hopefully it'll stay this way. And we're at the interpretive sign that talks about the North Alternate Oregon Trail coming back into the main trail here. The North Alternate Oregon Trail left the main trail just above Salmon Falls on the Snake River, and which is south of Hagerman. It ferried across the river, then went up through Billingsley Creek Canyon, crossed Malad Gorge, or Malad River just above the gorge, went up to Clover Creek, and then headed across and rejoined the main trail here. The North Alternate is interesting because it became the deadliest route in Idaho. Once they got to Clover Creek, which was a slow, stagnant stream, and by late in the year, it would be full of algae and gunk, probably full of giardia and E. coli and whatever else, animals started dying within hours, people started dying within days. So for the next 50 miles, every campsite on the North Alternate and then on the main Oregon Trail after the North Alternate joined, Diary accounts talk about having 8, 10, 12, 15 graves at these campsites. So we're at the Teapot Dome Hot Springs area now. This was a site that back in Oregon Trail days had hot water running in it. It also had cold water running in it. There are diary accounts of people that sat on a rock, one hand in hot water, the other hand in cold water. There's a lot of diaries that talk about getting to this springs getting a cup of water and finding it too hot to drink. Back about the 1895 era, they built a wooden bathhouse a little bit further away on a branch of this hot springs. A few years later, they built that into a, a volcanic rock bathhouse. The intent was that they were going to make this hot springs resort, advertise it back east, sell stock in it, and have this going enterprise out here in the middle of the desert. It didn't work and the bathhouse is now in ruins. But for many years, the people of Mountain Home would come up to this area for holidays and they would cook their chickens and their pigs in the hot water and have a picnic out here at the hot springs. Anyway, behind me, you see the remnants of the Oregon Trail. This section of the trail, unfortunately, used to be pristine and then somebody drove on it when it was wet, when it was muddy, chewed it up terribly. They drove about a quarter mile up the trail. You come to a fence, so they had to turn around in the desert and drive back down and make it even worse. So it's just an example of something happening to destroy a natural resource, and it shouldn't happen. So we've turned south on Highway 20, and we're just north of Mountain Home, Idaho now and Interstate 84. And we have this great display of signs for Rattlesnake Creek and an interpretive sign for Rattlesnake Station and such. Well, these used to be up at the base of the hills where Rattlesnake Creek is. But the property owner behind the pullout where the signs were wanted them moved. So rather than move them across the parking lot, 
the state transportation department pulled them out, put them in a warehouse, and I worked with Mountain Home to get them installed here. So they're a few miles out of where they need to be, but the story's still the same. Rattlesnake Creek was another popular camping site. It had a number of graves on it, and is typical of every camping site across Idaho in that respect. So this is going to be the end of part two of the byway tour.